Hello everybody, my name is Alex Strops, and what I have for you today is actually a functional merry-go-round. As you can see, these horses are actually suspended a bit in the air, and they're held up by these poles. Now we can go ahead and turn this on, and you'll see that the horses start to spin, and a little bit of carnival music starts to play. Now we can go ahead and jump on these horses. And we can turn it off like that. So, this concept is actually based off a post I saw on Reddit. And that post showcased a cool little design for a merry-go-round. The problem was it wasn't functional. And so I took it upon myself to actually make it functional. And it turned out pretty good, I'd say. This design, I think, would be really cool for maybe for an amusement park or maybe just a server. I feel like it would add a nice little touch to pretty much anything because it's a merry-go-round. So to use this, you actually need to use a little bit of MC Edit Magic. Um, but I'm going to do my best to explain how to do it. And hopefully you'll be able to make your own. So basically this design, it works off of using many different MC Edit filters, stacking entities and using change entities, filters and stuff like that. Let me go ahead and show you underneath. So basically we have a minecart, or rather a bunch of minecarts stacked together. And all the stacked minecarts are actually using offsets and custom blocks to display a fence. And then I have two invisible villagers with a horse stacked on top. And that's really all it does. It takes a little bit of work to get to that point. But we're going to show you how to do it. So the first thing you're actually going to need to do is build the whole framework for your merry-go-round. This is actually a pretty important step because how high the roof overhang of your merry-go-round is uh, determines how hard the rest of the project will be. I wouldn't say lower is better, but it certainly makes it a tiny bit easier. So you can really use any design you want. This is just the one I used. I pretty much stole it block for block. And then directly underneath, you're actually going to need to place a minecart track. Now there's a few important things about this track. One, you must have a three block straight away at some point. Um, preferably toward like the edges and it must actually be two blocks below the rest of your design so one block here and then this will be the second block right here another important thing is that directly above that you must have a slab track up here so you can actually see where the track will be followed now this is only important because we're going to be using villagers and the villagers will actually suffocate if you have a solid block and although they're invincible it will still make annoying choking noises while you're riding your ride so that's no fun. You could get away with using a solid block if you were to fiddle with it enough but I don't know if it's worth it so I would just use a slab. And so we actually got to do a little bit of custom track work here. So the real problem is with this is we have so many stacked minecarts that it's really hard to stop this design from keeping going on forever. We can't use a slope track with an unpowered rail because the fence poles will appear to go sideways. And we can't just use an unpowered rail because 15 minecarts stacked on one another will just plow right through it. And so what we actually need to do is push a block in front of it when we want it to stop and push a block behind it when we want it to go. And so this is the dead center of our design. Whoops. You'll see this is where we'll put our lever. And so what we're going to need to do is bring a redstone signal from that. And first make our stopping mechanism. We're going to need to put a sticky piston here. 
And I like to put an extra little uh, fence put, uh, no, rail right there. And this is going to go straight in like that. Now right here we need to put a pulse shortener first. Then we'll get a normal piston, put it right here, give that a block, put a torch right there. It's important to have a block here, another normal piston right here, directly under that piston go ahead and place a torch, two repeaters, dust, Make those both on four. And let's go ahead and see if it worked. So now when we flick this lever, you'll see that block will extend and then come back. And if we turn it back off, this piston will come out and stop it from going any farther. So you're going to want to make sure that you repeat that design on all four sides of your track so the merry ground can stop anywhere at once. And the next step in the process, I actually built a little bit of a tutorial here, is you're going to need to go ahead and stack some mine carts like this. Now this is where it gets a little bit um, confusing because it's not going to be the same for everyone. I have roughly a six block gap here and I needed about double that in minecarts so I have about 12 minecarts here I can't promise it will always be double but that's how it turned out for me and so basically what we're going to need to do is take out the change entity filters in minecraft MC edit rather and select each minecart and their settings are going to need to look like this um, at the bottom of the change entity, it'll say these four settings, and to make sure show tile is equal to true, the block ID and data are both 85, and the block offset should actually be 60. It should only be 60 for the bottom minecart here, and then each minecart you go up, you need to add 12 to the offset. So here would be 72, here would be 85, 96, so on, until you get to the top. If you need more offsets, go ahead and add more minecarts and keep adding 12. And if you need less, don't do all of them, only do the ones you need. And when you do that, you're going to need to take out the stack entities filter and simply stack all of these on top of this bottom minecart down here. And so that's pretty much how you make the fence. By using those block, uh, block offsets there, we will actually have an illusion of a fence post because it will technically be in the minecart. Alright, so the next thing you need to do is once you have your fence here, as you can see, the only thing we need to do now is put our villagers in and our horse up top. So these two villagers are directly above the minecart underneath. They can be any kind of villager you want, just make sure they're secure. And lastly, you should put your horse. This can be any kind of horse you want, but it's important that you pick the horse you do want because you can't change it later. Uh, make sure he's also tamed so you can ride him. And so, quite simply, you first got to make these guys invisible. So take out the Add Potion Effects to Mobs filter. Select both of these guys, make them invisible for 9999 nine, nine, nine seconds. Then go ahead and select both villagers and the horse, and use the Make Mobs Invincible full, uh, filter. This will make sure they don't suffocate, and that they don't get, die by people punching them. So once these guys are invisible, and they're all invincible, Go ahead and stack them all on top of this minecart, which should have your fence posts in it. And you'll be pretty much done with that. So this will pretty much be your end result. As you can see, these villagers actually aren't invisible anymore. You might want to add a little bit more time than just um, 9999. But whenever you're done, you'll have a horse suspended like this. Your minecart track should be all set up, so it'll stop and go. 
and you're pretty much good to go. Of course, you only have one set up at this point. And so there's a few problems I actually ran into here. Um, I had some trouble copying and pasting him. I'm not sure why. But whenever I would move the entity over there, it would still appear to be here. So if you can go ahead and go ahead and try and copy and paste it. If it doesn't work, you might just have to repeat the whole process. And so yeah, that's basically it. Um, oh wait, I'm actually going to show you the music real quick because I didn't go over that. The music is really simple. I just had a block with a piston on it, redstone block with piston. It will come down here. Over here is a little loop. This will actually just um, turn it on and off, and it has a little bit of bass track here. This will go on a one tick pulse and activate a loop of basically just a really simple chromatic scale. And this makes for some pretty good carnival music. Of course, there's much better music out there if you want to put more time into it, but this is all I ended up doing. And yeah, that's everything I got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed. And if you have some cool uses for this, uh, feel free to let me know. And of course, I didn't really do a formal tutorial, so there, I assume, will be many questions. But feel free to ask, and I'll try to answer as many as I can. So thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you next time.